Okay, ready? Three, two. I think we're coming at you live from responsible distances apart, and this still is the Blue Heaven Podcast. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Uh, my name is Clint. You can find me as Real FRG on Twitter and Instagram, and I really hope you can hear me. Yeah, please let us know if you can hear us in the comments below, because if not, then me and Clint are just talking to each other, which is also good, but not nearly as good as talking to all of you guys. What's going on, guys? My name is Brooke. You can find me at BrookeMe3 on Twitter and Instagram. Tim Rogers says, yes, all good. We are heard. We are out there. We are vocal. Congratulations to us. Clint, go ahead and give us a round of applause there. We earned that one. We did it, Reddit. <laughs> Big thank you to Mr. Gary Lee over there on the buttons for figuring it out for us. Hopefully you guys, you guys understand just as well as we do. Doing this stuff when you do not have a studio is very difficult and uh, yeah. we thank you for bearing with us and staying hanging in there it looks like a lot of you guys are already back in so we appreciate you guys for hanging around it means yeah, a lot i'm gonna i'm gonna chug here like sorry about <laughs> that I, I, I you know what it. gary um i should say really brooke this <laughs> is because of all the crap we were talking about that dodger zoom party i think it's everybody on us. Everybody was going hot online, so if you guys weren't there, we are going your official, albeit very late, we are your official Dodgers uh, post-game show, the Zoom party post-game show, so uh, thanks for stopping by. <laughs> That's part <laughs> yeah, of we'll, today's show. We'll talk a little bit about that Zoom party, some highlights, some lowlights. There were both. There were definitely both. Um, we'll talk a little bit about Vin Scully, who took a spill at his home earlier this week, unfortunately. But we got a lot of Vin love because I don't know about you, Clint, but the dude's 92 years old and he's done more to encourage us during this virus than anybody else has in the entire right? Dodgers team, I think. No, what what Vin does just for everybody on a day to day, like as soon as you heard that, you're just like, oh, no, 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 no. We don't, yeah. we don't want this. This can't be happening. Also on today's show, as part of that, we got to talk about our Dodger stories, favorite stories. Louis asking, what are we talking about? We will get to that, some of the news in a minute. Um, but, you know, just people talking about some of their favorite Dodger stories. We asked a little bit online, and, uh, you know, we're going to keep talking about that on this show. Um, and generally, just missing Dodger Stadium. You know, we, uh, we miss you desperately, and um, we hope to be back with you very soon. And finally on the show, if we get it that make it that far, Creeper Stash Battle featuring Enrique Hernandez. So before we get into the show, I do want to ask you if you guys could please rate and review uh, the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, wherever you happen to listen to the show. We'd appreciate it uh, if you would rate, review, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. You know, do be nice people uh, and we will send you um, our love and gratitude online. Also, we have to give a shout out to our friends who I think are right here uh, our, our friends uh, over at Sportscaster, where you could be the star of your own show, you could look like a pro, sound like a pro, you could actually probably have your audio going the first or even second or third time through, <laughs> which is plus stuff. We're all going to drink heavily as we do this to survive, but uh, go to Sportscaster.com, that is E-S-T-R.com, after we're done with this, and uh, we'll make it. We'll, we'll all make it. <laughs> all after the show. Guys, don't forget this is a live stream. As shoddily as it's put together, this is a live stream. So make sure you drop into the comments. Let us know where you're repping Dodgers Nation. Let us know where you're at tonight. I'm jumping into those comments a little bit. Leslie Taylor says, still weird to see you boys on a Monday. Yeah, we, yeah, it is weird to be here on a Monday, Clint. You know, usually Tuesday, I'm like, all right, I'm in the week. It's, it's Blue Heaven night, getting the swing of things. We've been doing Tuesdays for... I mean, we've been on and off for Tuesdays, switching over because of the season, but we've been doing Tuesdays for a solid minute now. Yeah, it's it's uh, what is it? We started this show. Blue Heaven's been around since about March or April of 2018. We started going live after the 2018 World Series or right right about you know in the 2018 uh, playoffs. So we've been coming at you live for a long time on Tuesday nights for the greater part. So Monday is weird. Bro both Brooke and I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> that we said is going to be on Monday. It's like, oh, Tuesday. Like, yeah. Just get caught in this routine. That's how we know this, it's Tuesday. This, this has been going on for a while. Even your former co-host is in the stream right now. And he oh, says he's here for all the FRG, which, let's be honest, that's what everybody's here for. Glad, Even glad, me. To, uh, glad to see you, bud. <laughs> he's East Coast doing, Kev? East Coast Kev. He's doing well. Nice kid, friend of the show. <laughs> nice kid. <laughs> Digging to a few more comments. Nancy's missing her Dodgers up there in Northern California. Uh, our boy Roach is in the stream. What up, guys? What's up going on, Roach? Good to see you. My well, friend. You. Oh, sorry. Jose. <laughs> Just because it makes him uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, Charlie Hamill says he's saying, uh, take me out to the ballgame nice and loud with Dieter. Brooke, did you sing? Uh, I did not, but 
I wasn't expecting Dieter. I wasn't expecting any of that. Um, so when he started playing the national anthem, I was like, oh, man, I miss baseball. I, it, got right. me. it got I, me. I think we got to dig right into it. Zoom yeah. party review. I wrote down a few notes right there. Right at the top is G. Lo, <laughs> George Lopez killing the game. All right. If you guys oh were here uh, or anybody here on the stream on the official, albeit slightly late post game show. Hey, hey, anybody watching that Zoom party would know that it is a technical struggle from time to time. And, you know, we're we're always over here. You know, you got the boy on the keyboard over there, Mr. Gary Lee. We're always trying to find ways to improve it and get a little bit better. And, you know, as we as we change little variables here and there, um, you know, things just uh, certain little switches don't work. And luckily, we're able to figure it out. So we're here and alive. But proud of us. And that Zoom party was interesting. So here's here's the thing. They they did their best and uh, yeah. there were some really good parts of it. And there were some parts of it where it was like, ah, I probably could have done without that personally could have done with less celebrities and more players. And if you're going to pick players, maybe a couple more personable players. I think Will Smith said six words on that Zoom, but he was there the <laughs> entire time. Uh, Joe Kelly's pretty personable, pretty funny guy. Jock has no personality whatsoever. Uh, Kenley. He's, you know, he's funny for what it's worth. Yeah. Um, Foot Locker. Th- there was just some people on that call where it was like, why is Mario Lopez on this call? Like, he does not need to be on this call. George you Lopez, know, I, 100% should have been yeah. on the call. <laughs> My uh, goodness, he saved that. So, again, that. If, if anybody was on uh, the Zoom, uh, Dodger Zoom party, do let us know in the comments. Let us know your thoughts on it, and we'll get to your comments along the way. But, like, yeah, George Lopez, I think, made that thing. Uh, to be honest, like otherwise it just would have been a thousand million percent cringe. Instead yeah. Of, I mean, he added to the cringe, but it's the funny uh, type of cringe. Um, yeah. But other than that, like, yeah, Jaleel White didn't really need to be there. The one time Nomar spoke, you couldn't hear him because he wasn't plugged in. Right. Uh, every video they played. Like, whoever was running it on the back end. OK, there's this little thing. It's a newfangled thing. It's called Direct Connect Ethernet. It's, it's it's very important when you're running a live stream. <laughs> Go to, ahead. In all, in, all fairness, that bad in all fairness, the Dodgers probably have Spectrum, which I have Spectrum. And uh, anytime I'm plugged into the Ethernet, I still get the potato quality sometimes in our stream. So <laughs> they're doing their best. They're doing this their thing. Is... And also there was the there was the kid. I, I'm already forgetting his name, but Gail just reminded me in the comments that he's from a show called Blackish, which yeah. I think is like a Netflix show or something like that. I had no idea who he was. I thought he was like, like a kid that they just invited on, like as a contest winner or something. I was like, who's his name is this again? Kid? Miles Berman. <laughs> Miles Miles Brown. No, 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 no. Miles Berman is the guy who uh, who gets you um, not drunk or something like that. I forgot yeah. how it goes. There you, you go. Your DUI defense attorney on DUI defense attorney. Miles L. Berman. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it it was it was peculiar. Uh, hey, you know, accent is good timing, yeah, but it good. was it was accurate. Yeah, I would say. Um, Gail, Gail hits it also in the head there. Brad Paisley was solid. You can yep. see where, where Alana a little, went a little bit off the rails when she's just like, I want to hear um, some country right now. <laughs> because <laughs> if anybody doesn't know Alana, if you, you know, provided half of the people on here, probably been blocked by her. Uh, but she's a country girl. She loves you know, her country. And Brad Paisley is a country superstar, as they like to call him in the biz. So um, that, was, that, was pretty, uh, that was pretty fun. To, Tim, to Tim Rogers uh, dropping in an L reference, or, or reference into the chat. I appreciate it. Miles Finch. That's good. <laughs> Quality, Tim. That's plus stuff. Uh, what else? Uh, but yeah. The, oh, I, one of ahead. the biggest things for me was uh, Joe Kelly calling the LaCroix LaCroc. And LaCroix. that was the uh, a highlight for me, for sure. And then he <laughs> followed that up by asking Kenley if he was in a footlocker. <laughs> Joe Kelly, sneaky good on this Zoom call. He's quick, man. He's witty. He's fast. He's funny. He snuck in the uh, Gabe Kapler uh, sexy beach picture. The background. <laughs> the background. Was like, uh, Elisa over there on Periscope says, why the heck was Steve Urkel on there? <laughs> J- Dude, Jaleel White is like, uh, like Gary can speak to this a little bit, but he's he's really involved in the Dodgers. Like he comes to every charity event yeah. and he's always eating all their food. <laughs> He's he's, he's like great with team. celebrity in LA that everybody just invites. Yeah, to. and he goes to every sporting uh, sporting charity event that I've ever been to. I've, I've always seen him around. He's at all of them. He's yeah. always there. So I'm yeah. like, ah, cool. 
give me Joe Kelly or give me death. And and Gary, I, I would uh, I, looking at the blips. I think you got to turn up your your monitors a little bit there. But uh, yeah, he, going back to to Urkel as he was so eloquently put here. I think that was the first time we saw him. Our our first event together, Brooke, was uh, that Puig tournament, and Puig goes hard when with the food. Like he had he had the tamales there. He had a couple taco guys, and Jaleel White shows up late, and he's just like, "Oh, I'll take that, and I'll take that." Inside, you know, there's a, a freaking lobster, and there's you know, all this other stuff. We're we're cowing down outside. You gotta love that. But uh, <laughs> digging into a couple couple more here. Ralph says next week will be great. You don't know if they're gonna do another one of these. Like how soon they're gonna do it. This whole thing seemed weird because it went from a thousand to somehow ten thousand, which you know I don't know if you're aware is a pretty drastic leap in uh, in quantity of of viewers there. But you know we everybody went into it pretty you know in the dark about what it was. Even Brooke and I were texting before the show. I was like, I, I, are we going to be on camera? Like, uh, do they hear us? What's going on here? It was um, peculiar, but yeah, Lacroix. Well, it's funny uh, watching I think... some fans get ready by putting on makeup. <laughs> hey, I, I, yeah. you know, I had to shave up. up. Yeah, yeah, you got to look pretty, you know. Yeah. <sighs> anyway, um, let's let's get into uh, you know some of the real stuff here. There has been actual news. Uh, anybody else that wants to drop in some Dodger Zoom party stuff, go for it. We're gonna have some fun with that along the way. Uh, thankfully, hey, we haven't had any glitches since we come back on, so we did it. Reddit. <laughs> So far, so good. All right. So we're not going to be taking. Well, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to be taking shots with each one of these new pieces because YOLO. But, Brooke, uh, the Dodgers finally gave a, a sliver of an update about tickets. What yeah, up with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of. A little bit of an update. If you guys uh, follow uh. the Dodgers subreddit, which Clint and I do, because there's a lot of good information there. I swear this is water. Well, that's good. Um, it, so we follow it, rock. and there's there's always fans updating stuff on there all the time. And one user posted that he had an interaction with somebody from the Dodgers ticketing team on some level and basically said, hey, you bought your ticket package from Costco, so you can either get a credit for a different game, but you're not getting a refund. Talk to Costco. So if you bought your tickets, uh, I know Costco has like ticket plans, right? Clint, I don't, I don't, I'm a yeah. Sam's Club guy, so I don't, I don't know. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, I don't have enough money to go to Costco, <laughs> but uh, it turns out if you, if you bought those ticket plans, the Dodgers might be screwing you out of some stuff. It kind of just led me to talk about the ticket <laughs> refund thing again. There's still been no communication. Like even the, uh, the Dodgers update page mm-hmm. still says like All Star Week hasn't been affected at all. And it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, it has. <laughs> it's been I, affected. I thought that was actually like full blown canceled or they did put it that it was canceled so. it hasn't been officially called off yet wow even on the updates page it hasn't been officially affected yet uh our boy hatfield over on facebook hatfield says class action lawsuits tend to move the flag and of course i don't know if this happened after or just like before our, our episode uh our recording last week last tuesday but you know the dodgers were named amongst all the other teams and mlb in that uh, a class action lawsuit about you know, tickets and all that, because essentially fans are being held hostage. And it's the really the worst time for fans to be held hostage about this kind of crap, because people need money whether they're out of work, then the non-essentials and hell, even the essentials that are trying to figure out, you know, what to do with family and kids and all that. You know, by the way, another sneaky good thing was um, when Mario Lopez was finally summoned to speak, uh, to speak. Freaking AC Slater, man, he uh, I don't think he's a fan of his children. <laughs> He, he did talk a lot of crap on his kids for for a dad. I was, I was like, ah, uh, I don't know if I'd want my kids to hear this. I know, right? But yeah, fans are just plainly being held hostage for for tickets in uh, you know a, a technicality that is. What are they saying again? They're postponed. The games are postponed. I'm going to tell you right now. There's a chance that that game on April 5th isn't going to happen. <laughs> This is a good chance it's not going to happen. Interleague games aren't going to happen. So I'm sure what they're figuring know? out a lot of things, but whatever. It, it's really weird. Uh, Charlie Hamill. Charles says, uh, I thought MLB officially did cancel the All-Star game, so we do got to check that out. Um, I, I do remember seeing something like that. You would think we would know the news, but you know what? Uh, Everything's been, kind of blended together over the last couple of weeks, so now I can't even remember. All I remember is that I checked the uh, actual Dodgers page, and 
under the All Star Game section has said nothing official has been affected. So. It's a great it's a great Tuesday night right now. <laughs> See oh yeah. See that Tuesday. Tuesday. Uh, other news: Puig to San Francisco once again heating up. Now, eh. it was from. I, I'm not going to say it's a not reputable source, but it's not a very uh, well known source. Usually, when we look at these accounts that That's have a way to say it. four digit, you know, followers, it's like. I mean, I'm not going to say what do you know because that's I not have four fair. digit followers. <laughs> hey, <laughs> it, I mean, yeah, it's not fair to say what do you know? You only have five thousand followers or whatever, but still, it just seemed like such a weird thing to to kind of dump out there that that Puig is, you know, there's what I guess they're saying essentially has like a verbal agreement once the uh, the the lockout on player activity right um, is lifted, then Puig is going to be a giant. Which, uh, you know, if Puig gets back with Kapler, you would think Gabe Kapler would know. you think Farhan would know. And, and Puig, uh, if they're, if San Fran is looking for somebody to put some asses in the seats, Puig's going to do it. <laughs> I don't know if it's a good thing. I mean, I mean, I mean if, if you're looking to sell no, Kevin, tickets to the Giants games. But yeah. oh, Kevin <laughs> said wasn't the guy who guaranteed Harper to the Dodgers. That's good. <laughs> That's was not, he's got a whole other world of things going on in his life right now. He's got a lot going on right now. <laughs> uh, but for the Giants, I think that's probably one of the best moves you can make, other than the fact that they have way too many outfielders. I think you know they just brought back Hunter Pence. So unless Hunter Pence is going to learn to play first base or something like that, it seems like a weird move. But, I mean, that's, that's good. If they want to bring uh, Puig in, he's going to sell tickets. Even when he plays poorly, he puts fans in the seats because he's exciting and he likes to fight entire crowds. So if I were the Giants, if I were Farhan, I'd be like, yeah, bring in Puig back. We just lost one of the faces of our franchise to the Diamondbacks, so why not bring in somebody else to light the crowd on fire? <laughs> one of he'll my do it. Enemy. <laughs> yeah, one of, exactly. one of the favorite things I saw of it all was somebody saying that Puig should wear Mattis Bumgarner's number. Ooh. <laughs> like, hell yeah, I'm down. I am game for it. Let's do this. But honestly, what do you? How do you personally feel about the idea of Puig? In, you know, in in San Francisco as a giant, I, I can't I can't fault a guy for taking a job when he doesn't have a job. So I I saw a lot of people that were like, screw that guy. Like I'll never. We I think we had a poll where it's like, would you boo him? And a lot of people were like, yeah, I would boo that guy. Screw him. He's a giant. I'm like, eh. he it, I don't he, think he hasn't got any offers. He hasn't got any offers from anybody. Yeah, like I, they do need a job. <laughs> I yeah. doubt Dodger Stadium boos him when he comes back. I still think they'll. I him. hope not, because people, when he's people, giant. people yeah. booed Matt Kemp uh, when he got traded, and, and mm-hmm. there was obviously more that went into that. There were mm-hmm. some comments that he made where it yeah. sounded like he was trashing on L.A. when he kind of clarified when he came back. But the fact that people booed him when he left, just like yeah, he, he got traded, like relax, easy. So L.A. can be a not forgiving town mm-hmm. when you're on our bad side, and that's for sure. There's no reason Puig should be on our bad side. But the fact that he's signing a free agent contract with San Francisco might might rub people the wrong way. I don't stupidly. know. If it would, uh, I don't know if it would be considered meta, but like the idea of and, and Spring Blur here on YouTube says Puig fighting the D-backs. Puig getting into a fight with Diamondbacks version of Mad Bum. I am all for it. Bring In it. The pool. Give it to me. In the pool. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, it, it is what it is. You know, it's one of those things. The dude needs a job. If it goes there, whatever. It, it, all he's going to be is, uh, well, there's not going to be a trade deadline this year, most likely, but whatever. Everywhere Yolo. he's gone, he's endeared himself to the fans. He's said the right things. He helps the charities in the local neighborhoods. He's done well. And most likely, if he does sign with San Francisco, he's going to do the same thing. I hope he doesn't say anything stupid towards the Dodgers. I don't think he would. Um, you know, because he just still does a lot of charity work in LA. So yeah, that's the yeah. only reason I can see Dodger fans booing him is if he made some stupid ass remark, like you know, during his press conference. He's. I think he's also taken advantage of by media members a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. Like they want to. They tried to do that when he got traded from LA. Like they tried to get him to say bad things about the Dodgers. There's obviously a language barrier there. We've talked to him. He his English is not great. Um, and so I think a lot of times media unfairly takes advantage of him in that way. So that's something to keep an eye out for. If he does end up signing with San Francisco, he might just say something blatantly anti-Dodgers. That's a possibility. Because he did say, like, 
I'm ready to not wear blue. I'm ready to wear red. And everyone was like, what the heck? And it's like, well, that's his new team. Of course he's ready to wear his team's colors. That was the big thing at first. It's like uh, Puig is very obviously trying to win the breakup because that's what it was when he was traded to Cincinnati. And then he he came back, people cheered him. And then, you know, ho-hum, he hits a home run off of Kershaw because I think anybody could have done that off of Kershaw last year. That's right. What? At me. But (laughs) uh, um, yeah, you know, I, I... Somebody had posed the idea, and this will be the last Puig part. Um, somebody had posed the idea of like, is Puig going to be like the first giant to get cheered a little bit at Dodger Stadium? And that would also just well, give, give me the uncomforts. Just everybody be quiet. Just that's just go <laughs> just, get a beer. No, but no booze, <laughs> yeah, no claps. Was... Everyone just sit there and stare. Yeah. He got a he got a uh, with um so the thing that about having a name that sounds like booze it really gets confusing um so when he came back to Dodger <laughs> Stadium as a Bruce red everyone, everyone was yelling Puig but it sounded yeah. like everybody was booing so even Joe Davis had to like clarify like he's not being booed they're saying Puig and so I, he got a good welcome back when he was on the Reds but who knows if it's in orange and black I was saying boo Burns. Oh, Thank boo words. Yeah, that's good. I mean, Kevin's good. here. I got to drop a Simpsons reference. Throwback yeah. Thursday on a Monday right here. In other news, the world's worst. Uh, I wouldn't. <laughs> maybe not the world's <laughs> worst father, but on paper. You know what? They have a lot in common. Children yeah. and Jock Peterson have a lot in common. And Jock Peterson is uh, having baby number two. <laughs> it, it was what? announced days after Clayton Kershaw said <laughs> You know, the one person on my team, one teammate I would not want watching my children is Jock Peterson. Boom, child number two. What up with that? <laughs> what uh, What did I say to you? I said something about who let that child have another child. <laughs> and yeah, I think that that's was... about spot on. Congrats yeah. to Jock and this yeah. family. Poppy's going to get another uh, sister or brother. Did, I don't know. No, but I can't announce which They're getting something. They're getting yeah, something, it. and, and uh, it's cool. Poppy's such a good cool. name. Though. It's cool to watch Jock. I love bro. that name. I just wonder what the second child's name is going to be. Mm-hmm. Seed. Poppy Seed. Ah, <laughs> oh, there you go. There That's you it. Go. Uh, and there you go. That's good. <laughs> Staying on that same vein of children in the Dodgers family, Joe Kelly, uh, known lacrosse lover. Uh, <laughs> him and his wife just had twins last week. That's So they're adding to their population. Knox gets a, a new... That's good applause. It sounded really good. It sounded better than the uh, Dodgers video. So thank you for that. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it comes. Uh, Joe Kelly's having an eventful offseason, is he not? He breaks a window, has some twins, gets on a Zoom call, puts Gabe Kapler naked in his background. There's a lot going on with and, that guy. And Joe Exotic. And Joe Exotic. Yeah, he's uh, he's definitely had uh, a good... I think it's been a good week for him. It's like a solid uh, maybe 10 days for Joe Kelly. In the Joe Kelly Fight Club, things have gone down. He, he went all over Boston media, you know, Boston radio, too. It just totally worked. Uh, Leslie says Sunflower Peterson, by the way. Oh, so, that's good. That's a good name. You got Poppy. You got Sunflower. It works. Oh, yeah, I'll take that. So I the like twins, by the way, Joe Kelly's twins' first words were actually, where's that draft coming from? Because, you know, the broken mm. window. Yeah. I follow. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. That's like that's like my quality of bad joke. You know, I was thinking about it when when putting together today's show. I was like, you know, I really want us to have like an on the spot joke segment, like like the comedy without a uh, without a net, and really just to see you guys try to come up with jokes. I think would be um, it would be fun for me. It would be death for the rest of the people listening and watching this thing. But it's cool. We're already all there together. We did it, Reddit. <laughs> We um, did. In other news, final bit of uh, news, of course, I, I would say, you know, you read you read that that headline of of, you know, Vin Scully taken to the hospital. It's just not a good it's not a good feeling. Yeah. When you read that because dude's 92 he, and he's one of those guys. He's been in, you know, like our spotlight of late. He's been. You know, the guy that that has lifted us off, like like you mentioned, I don't know if we've even mentioned it on air if it was before or whatever the hell it was, but he's he's done a lot for the community, <laughs> even in retirement and through this COVID and all that. So he took a spill in Vince Gully fashion. He was funny about him falling at home and uh, we all feel bad. Yeah. I mean, I read the headline and I was like, 2020 has really sucked already. Mm -hmm. So can we please just have 
one good thing happen. So mm-hmm. it was good to hear Vin uh, joke about it, I guess. I'm, I'm yeah. glad they included that in the original tweet. Like, hey, he fell. He's in the hospital. He's OK. He joked about sliding head first. And I was like, all right, if he can joke, he's OK. Uh, th- if you guys were on the Zoom call, they played a Vin Scully clip and the way it was skipping and slowed down made it sound like he was not 92, but 292. And it sounded really sad and they depressing. They just released but the full they, audio. Yeah, I was yeah, just going to say, had, they, they, they tweeted no it out. Choice. They were like, he's okay, guys, yeah. we promise. Even Honestly, Alana, it, was, Alana was like, guys, he does not sound like fine. that. <laughs> yeah, no, it sound, 100% it sounded like he had a stroke. And that's yeah, just like, not oh, what you want to no, hear. Like, yeah, the, I, I mean, the thing like, for me no, personally, no, when I first saw it, um, I, I saw it. I think it was trending, and then I got scared because, of course, mm. this is 2020. And I just right. uh, reminisced about, not reminisced, but remembered how Chick Hearn passed away, and he did fall at home, too. So, you know, those are the things that you just kind of, for me, it got goosebumps, and I was just like, this city can't take another thing like that. You know, it's just, mm-hmm. uh, but so glad to hear that he's doing well. And, you know, he's really been, I, I can't think of anybody else in LA that's been more encouraging than he has. You know, there's nobody, no other sports person really coming out and speaking. So he's been doing a great job being that grandfatherly patriarch of the city that everybody can can kind of lean on. Yeah, for sure. Uh, he, we talked about it earlier in the show, Clint, but he's really just been the guy to come out. And he's the one that you would expect the least action out of during a time like this, especially a guy as older as he is. And he can be pretty compromised by this virus pretty easily. But he's done a lot of stuff to make sure to put his voice out there to greet fans, stuff like that. So so for him to go above and beyond during all this is incredible, even during a time when he got hurt. And then he records a whole thing about him being OK. Like he didn't have to do any of that, but he did. So that kind of led us to talk about within w- with with each other, I guess, some Vin stories, some Vin love that we've been talking about over the past couple days. So we want to hear from you guys. Let us know your favorite Vin stories. I'm sure in 67 years of broadcasting, you got to have at least one of them. Uh, yeah, uh, no doubt. Uh, we got a few people. John is saying, love Vin, love Vin, love Vin. You know, that's one of those guys. It's like, as uh, Mrs. FRG says in the stream, just bubble wrap Vin already put him away <laughs> until uh you know dodger sees him or something like that i would say the same with lasorda too those are two just iconic people that we can never lose so just don't <laughs> don't ever let it happen and did that, you hear that's um my only request did you hear george lopez at the end talking about vin when <laughs> he said i thought he tripped over tommy lasorda <laughs> and i was like oh my god george Gilo, Chingon, like OG Chingon, bringing it, man. I love that. He does not care about anything anymore. He has no image to put up. He's like, this is who I am. (laughs) Uh, By the way, we had our first, uh, at least the first one I saw, our first mustache comment comes from uh, our girl Jess. Jess says, oh, my God, that mustache. Yeah, you you missed it. In a good way. uh, We don't know. Is it a good one? (laughs) Please. Let us know in the comments below. It's a good one. All right, well, uh, Gary, go ahead and lead it off. Like, give us a, a quality Vin story for you. Because you have history. You have, you have years. years. No, I do. I mean, I mean, for years. me, it was just uh, just back in the day, just going to uh, a charity event. I forgot which one it was. But it's just uh, when he walked in the room, it's weird how everybody... Like, you know, there's there were a lot of, you know, old... Players from all over the generations, all different team sports, Kings, Lakers, Dodgers, whatever. People were there to just, um, you know, just do the charity thing, you know, drinking food. But when he walked in, it was just, it's crazy how much respect he gets, you know. And it's just, you don't see it until you see other people who you think you respect just uh, stop and say, oh my God, he's here. And then you see see them turn into fanboys and they all want to go shake his hand. Uh, It's just, it's very... uh, all inspiring and it's just something that i still haven't met him in person i still haven't shaken his hand yet it's on the bucket list for sure and hope hopefully one day you know yeah we gotta we gotta get some some uh some facetime with vin even if yeah. it's like literally facetime like i don't know if he knows how to work an iphone but i hate iphones i'll get an iphone for vin that's uh boom there's your there's your hot take right there <laughs> but but uh, you know, we had a little bit of a run in with him when they announced the All Star Game last year. He was there, and you know, I at least got to say hi. And he kind of, 
you know, said hi back. So I'm good. I, I could die happy. I did have the minor amount of interaction with Vin. Um, you know, I mean, there's so many great Vin stories. Um, Carrie, I don't know if you, you happen to have the, the uh, clip uploaded, but one of my favorite Vin stories is actually from um, one of our guys, one of our writers, one of our contributors, AJ. AJ's daughter was actually spoken about by Vin on a broadcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you were you able to no I wasn't able to get that one just because uh, but I will get that I will get that later I have another Vin story I mean he's just a Vin clip you know but on that, um, on, that uh, on that note though guys go ahead and uh, go go to uh, at AJ on the guitar on Twitter it's it's pinned there on his uh, on his uh, you know Twitter feed Vin Scully talking about his daughter and it's it's pretty legendary and, and everybody anybody who watched a broadcast of Vin knows anytime a you know, a little kid, an adorable little child popped up on the screen. Vin's just he's melting away mm-hmm. <laughs> when it comes to kids. But you you said you got something? Yeah, I had the I had the kids uh playing at Dodger Stadium. This is just one of those memories of just Vin just immortalizing a moment for two kids. So hopefully uh you guys can hear this and then here we go. Second inning, no score in the ball game, a great contrast. Two youngsters, maybe 10 years old, nine years old. One is a Dodger fan, just jumping up and down. He's as happy as can be. The little giant fan, they've already won three World Series, so he's calm and cool, and he is eating his nachos. So what a contrast in those two. Wonderful to see them. And the thought is, of course, they will stay that way probably all their lives, one rooting for the Dodgers and the other for the Giants. And look at that clip. You got you got Granky in there. Come on now. Like that that's Yeah, that was that was pretty it was back from 2015 and I think uh yeah, yeah. you know, just a great way where uh Vinny was just kind of you know, showing a little bit of his old school Giants fandom along with his Dodgers fandom. <laughs> uh Brooke, what's your uh, what's your Vin story, man? Uh you remember that one time Jim Tracy went off on the Empires? I don't remember what year this is. I don't even remember, but Vin kind of did the <laughs> the interpretation of what he was saying, or I guess the lip reading. It's like a whole thing when he's taking out the cuss words Where? from Jim Tracy yeah. and replace, replacing them with something else. He said, uh-huh. this is blinking fertilizer. <laughs> fertilizer was a classic. He said, he said you got to be blinking me. <laughs> it's It's one of those moments where like, as old as Vin is, you would think he wouldn't know how to handle something like that. He would just be so appalled that he would pull back. And he so often just leaned into those things and was so <laughs> funny with it. It was just amazing what he would do. Like a fan would flip off the camera and you would find a way to make a joke out of a bird flying onto the screen or something. Like that. It was like, dude, how you are so sharp for being like 85 years old and broadcasting games for 60 plus years. So there's, a, I mean, there's, there's a million Vin moments. Um, I wasn't the age of like falling asleep with a radio under your pillow to Vin or anything like that. I'm a, I'm a 93 baby, so we had television. Um, but I was definitely a uh, TV on every night on KCAL 9, watching, listening to Vin. Didn't matter if it was past my bedtime or not, getting to listen to him every single night. And Vin, Vin was one of the things that made me a Dodger fan early on. So million, million Vin memories. And I'm like Gary where – you know, when when we when I was considering coming on to Dodgers Nation, that was like the one thing that I had considered it was like, I want to meet Vin Scully, and that's the only person I really, mm-hmm. really want to meet. Players are awesome, and it's great to interact with them, to get to meet them, and everything. But um, the one person I've always wanted to meet is Vin Scully. Still have not got the chance to, but need some quality Vin time. <laughs> so this is it, everybody. If you guys can find Vin, bring him to Brook. He lives at 100 Brook Street. That's my street. Yeah. I, I there's a good chance I die if I meet him. I thought you were just gonna stop there. There's a good chance no, no, I yeah. die. I don't like you guys. I see me interact with players. Uh, <laughs> we've done it pretty often. I don't really fangirl or, or you know just no like, that guy does like frozen. <laughs> and, like I don't do hey, that. That was Russell Martin, and that was twice. I it was I, the I, same day. I understand the Russell Martin one a little bit more because he was like a hero growing up to me. But uh, mm-hmm. I've, I've never like locked up to where I can't say anything. It's always just it's always very normal and smooth and fine. But I think Vin, I would have I would have emotional 
distress. <laughs> you probably need to think about it and write down some questions. Like, yeah, and that's just why, prep. That's why prep I everything. I have to prep a lot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, John. John asked and says, "I would listen to the transistor radio under my uh, under my pillow. Wore out a dozen nine volt batteries per season, <laughs> and that was just the thing. You know, if we you so we we put out a, uh, a a part two. There were so many great stories we've gotten over uh, over the last few weeks from our fan submissions page. And uh, Gary, I think you added uh, an official link on on the website for that. If I'm not yeah, mistaken, right? Yeah, it's uh, here. I'm gonna drop in the link into the chat right now. But it is DodgersNation.com/slash fan stories. And the way I built it isn't. It's not just an email pay, email us your story. The way I built it is I asked uh, five questions about like, you know, uh, what happened, uh, when did this happen, uh, and what was so memorable memorable about it, who are you with, I think, uh, and how long have you been a Dodger fan? So at least we got some like meat and potatoes of the story, and then we'll put it together for you. And if we do um, decide to put the story up on the site, uh, we're going to probably email you and ask you for photos or any videos that we can put up. So, you know, we're trying to do our best to share some of these stories because even when we asked them on on Twitter the other night, I mean, we were getting some really good ones. And people are already sharing photos of them stuck in the elevator with, uh, who was it? Uh, there's... Kenta. Oh, yeah, it was Kenta. Yeah, oh, Kenta, getting yeah, stuck in yeah, the yeah. elevator with Kenta and just like hearing people's like unique stories or how many people have been yelled at by Tommy Lasorda. You know, that that is a long retweet right there. So, you know, those are really good stories that it's just fun to read on Twitter. But, you know, some people have really long stories. So any kind of stories you're used to sharing at your friend's birthday parties or at meetups and it's just your favorite Dodger story. It'd be great to uh, if you share it with us so that we can share it with everybody else. Yeah, I don't know about you guys, but that's where like I'm kind of at right now. It's, you know, we're we're into we should have a, a, a full month old season by now. And we haven't been to Dodger stadium. Brooke hasn't been to three or four games where the Dodgers all lost because he's, you know, a curse. Uh, and I'm hitting that. I mean, I can't say I'm sad, but like, it's like, damn, I need, I need baseball. I need to be at the ballpark. And you just like, you know, you, you watch them throw back games, you know, MLB Network has done some great stuff with that. Sports in LA, they they have. I think they're showing um, uh, Justin Turner highlights tonight. But there's there's so many. Like you just think back to all these memories, all these times you've been at the game. Like I was there, I was there, I was there. You see that? You know, I was at the four plus one game, sort of. That's a long story, but you know, you 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 look at this. You know, you trek through this this history we're talking about here. You know about. Vin Scully and just like what he means to us. And there's nothing more Vin Scully than being at Dodger Stadium, even though, you know, the modern crowd, self included, wouldn't have been in that era to, you know, listen to Vinny at the ballpark and have it make sense. Of course, <laughs> as we all keep getting older, the delay keeps getting worse. So you, that doesn't work at all anymore. But mm. what's more Vin Scully than 1000 Vin Scully Avenue? Dodger Stadium, and, and that's what we're talking about. You know, we did ask some of the folks online, just like, what are your favorite stories? And, and I mean, I know both of you guys sifted through them, looked at some of them, and it's just, it, it's, it's it's incredible to see these stories and be like, either I'm there or I remember that, or just that's a cool way to become a fan. Yeah, it's first first game with your your parents. Did your mom <laughs> take you, or your mom, your dad take you, your grandparents take you? I mean, one of my good memories is actually going to game with Clint, you know, like this is when we just first started and he introduced me to the dollar game, you know, and it's like every single play. I bet you he's going to steal second. I bet you he's going to take a strike. I bet you he's going to uh, draw the walk, whatever it was. It was just the dollar game. And it felt like we were at a bleep bar and just like just, you know, making it rain. We're like, OK, like what what it was it? But we drank so much. We had so much fun. Uh, I got yelled at for you know, making uh, Puig, you know, yes, steal second. Yeah, you know, and so and I met some of Clint's friends. Yeah, and then you're high-fiving with random strangers. I mean, those are one of the best moments for me. It's like when the game goes down to it, to walk off, and you're just finding anybody in the crowd to just high-five or hug. I mean, I just can't think of it these days. But, like, man, those, yeah. those are good memories. And if you can share those, those would be really great. Because I feel like right now... Uh, the world needs f a fewer, a few more good stories than than all the stories we're reading right now. You know, thinking yeah, about really. that, man. Thinking about that, it's like you, you could, you could, 
picture yourself in a section. You're, you know, you're infield reserved or something like that. You're somewhere in the middle. You're stuck around a bunch of people you think are assholes and like, oh god, they yeah. gotta stop talking or whatever. And then a home run happens. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I miss that. Yeah, it's just a random commentary you hear in the crowd. Yeah, well, what do you got, Brooke? Uh, I was so I was reading some of those fan stories today. Um, we because we had a couple submissions on that. Um, what's that called? The uh, what's the bird one? Twitter. Email. <laughs> yeah. No, I got Internet. it. Was it was on the twitters as you call it. Uh, my mind's a little blank today. I'm still running off the uh, George Lopez cussing immediately off the start of the stream and getting muted. It was so. 15 seconds into the Dodger Zoom party. Literally. Full-blown F-bomb. Seconds, yeah. Sujo just went, boom, red button. Um, <laughs> I don't think Sujo there, had anything to do with that. Was, yeah, I doubt but it. But anyway, but I was looking through those replies. There was one in particular. It was uh, Rebecca, who's at Dodger Foodie on Twitter, said, a spring training a few years back, we met up with Chris Hatcher out of Buffalo Wild Wings. And I was I I, there was just so many questions that I had about that. I don't know what happened there. I don't know why Chris Hatcher was out of Buffalo Wild Wings makes sense actually but meeting he's, up with some a player at a drop ball, like, he's trying to get a job <laughs> is that he said yes I, yes i did i think he's still <laughs> trying to get a job at buffalo wildlings as a matter of fact um <laughs> <laughs> but there's a lot of people jumping in this stream um roach says my first game was july 24 2004 dodgers beat the padres 12 to 2 i was not at that game i don't know if you were but i was not at that game i don't, I don't. I can't remember the specific dates of things. I've been to a lot of games. Like I was at the uh, the now hated Alex Cora 18 pitch at bat game against uh, I think it was Matt Clement. I was mm. sitting in. The, they, okay, so check this out. There used to be a section, or there used to be a, a, a ticket package it was the Coca Cola seats, and you get four tickets, four drinks, four hot dogs, and it was only like 40 bucks. That's like one damn ticket now. Fix yourself, Dodger. Anyways. Um, I I don't remember my first Dodger game. I do remember my first baseball game. I was very young. It was an Angel game when they still wore the blue pinstripe stuffs. Morning, and Angel. I sat next to an old lady that smelled like mustard. Oh. I didn't know her. She just smelled like mustard. That's my first baseball memory. Smell that old lady right now. Brady. I would love to smell that old lady right now. <laughs> I have no doubt. In my mind. Should I tweet that? <laughs> I would love to smell that old lady at a baseball game. Brooke B3, I I would no, 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 no. I'm going to just make it, I would love to smell that old lady right now. You know? This is Brooke up TF. Yeah, put that on my highlight reel for yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Rebecca responded and she says, I'll answer any questions you have about Chris Hatcher. Oh, Hamilton's there. I miss you, Hamilton. Oh, never heard Rebecca of told us to DM if we want to call her. We should have got her live on the show to tell her that story. We might have to bring her on at some point. To oh, for sure. Her story. story. I need to know that. Yeah, we we can uh, we can do it better than just about any podcast out there. So we'll bring uh, we'll start bringing on fans. Why not? Yolo. Yeah, <laughs> having fans on is cool. Give them you a voice. Uh, you know our, our guy. Uh, say? <laughs> our guy Kevin. Uh, he's <laughs> he brings up he's he's playing. Bright note guy, he's playing bright side guy. The season delay gives him a chance to build robot umpires into the stadium. Longer we wait, the less Angel Hernandez we get. Positive thinking? Uh, uh, anybody? Anybody? Yeah. No? Yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. Anyway, we'll take it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Katie, your girl Katie, tell us, says, my parents took me to my first Dodger game when I was a kid. The last game I went to, I took my dad, and the Dodgers hit a walk off of. You know, we've been known to see a, a walk off or two. That's one or two, one or two. I mean, if oh, she says that was my last baseball game with my dad, it was amazing. Like that kind of story, you know, it's awesome. You know, I mean, at the same time, I, I'm not going to read the full context in that because I don't, I don't know enough of the context of that. So I'm going to assume the positive thing until the next game. But um, yada, yada. That's a happy memory. Yeah, it is. Yeah, there. it's one to look back on and smile about and enjoy the time you had with somebody in your life, whoever it might have been. Um, I know for me, one of my earliest Dodger games was with my brother. Um, so him taking me to a game. You when have I was a brother? A kid. Yeah, you didn't know I had a brother. I mean, to be fair, I thought you only had man. sisters. I do have a lot of sisters, have but sisters? I, I have an older brother. He's oh nine years God. older than me. We're so horrible. We need more team bonding sessions. 
Yeah, we oh. only drink towers of beer and bet on Dodger games. That's all we do together. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, I mean, maybe we need to finally have an episode of of this where we just like tell people we 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 date each other on the show for people to get speed to know dating. Each. Yeah, yeah, we're just speed. <laughs> all right, one of these episodes, me and Brooke are gonna speed date, and Gary, you can moderate. I used to run speed dating events, so I got all the equipment for that. It's all good. Uh, you used to speed date? Dude, well, I used to, to yeah. tell me that you have brothers and sisters, too. <laughs> I, I do have a sister. <laughs> uh, and you think you know people. I know. This this whole yeah, new I'm life makes sisters. you forget, yeah. <laughs> uh, Brooks' friend Gary, what was your first game? My first game? Yeah. Man, I don't honestly don't remember. Was Dodger Stadium up? Shut like, up. Seven. So yeah, no. <laughs> no, I think my first game at Dodger Stadium wasn't a Dodger game. It was the Olympics in 84. So my mom, my mom took me and my cousins to Dodger Stadium. I was like, holy God. I still remember. We sat at center field, center field in the pavilions. I think we were like literally the last row. So um, it was still amazing. And uh, it was just cool. The, the, fun, the fun thing was that uh, when my family immigrated here to, to the States, uh, our landlords were Mike Socia's aunt and uncle. So for some reason, we, we got, I, I sat on Tommy Lasorda's lap for some reason back in the day. And then um, Mike Socia would, uh, I don't know, but. This was like a week ago. Yeah. You know, you know, the, you know, the story is that I got the World Series team autographed baseball. And then um, I played with it because we had nothing else to play with. And that was the worst decision of my life. So uh, I didn't get any more free stuff after that. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like a week ago. <laughs> you got me with that one, man. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Gail wants in on this. We got to find Gail's comment. Gail's got to be coming up. John has a special memory. Took my grandfather to his very first baseball game. 1978 World Series Game 2. Um, I have yet to been, yet to be to a uh, to a World Series game. I think I said that. That's such an awesome memory. That John Olson's memory. That's really cool. Like, seriously, you should write up a story on that kind of stuff because there's so many people who, who would love to do that. I'd love if I could have done that, you know, and, yeah. and see the smile on, you know, your grandfather's face as he enters the stadium. I mean, it's all about those kind of moments that you cherish forever. And if you could share that, that'd be great. Uh, on Periscope, Shrug on Periscope says, first Dodger game, my mom had me in the womb. We're going to count that, judges? Hey, you we were there. count that. Sure. You were there. I'm sure you had a That's Dodger dog, too. It's <laughs> up to you. you know, if I you want to count yeah. it, you count it. <laughs> As you said, you had a Dodger dog, yeah? Uh-huh. Oh, Gail uh, wants in on the speed dating thing with us. That's what she oh, wants in. Yeah. Oh, okay. Count a, a Zoom speed dating? That could work. What is a good... All right, I'm going to count Gail in with... Uh, in your face, sucker! Boom. That works. That was my, that was my story. <laughs> Uh, what else you got? Find one, Brooke. Find us a good one. Oh, you need a good one? Uh, Tim Rogers, okay. he's got his first, he's got like the exact date of his first game. And it was, uh, let's see, 212 years. No, it's 1973. <laughs> uh, September 22nd, 1973 versus the Reds. Don Sutton got lit up. Steve Garvey and Joe Ferguson hit two bombs each. That's pretty cool. That's cool. I would not be surprised if Tim remembers every single game he's ever been to in his entire life, by the way. He's just he's just that good. Insane. All 2080 of them? 2080. <gasps> <laughs> I don't remember much about the exact first game. I just remember the first experience. And I think I recently even said it on one of these shows here. But uh, pulling up to Dodger Stadium, you know, I think we were in my car or whatever. But pulling up to Dodger Stadium was night. We were late to the game because we're OG Dodger fans like that. And I'm pretty sure Dodger had just hit a home run. And, you know, it was like the music was going off. It was like the old da na 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 da na 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 or something like that. I don't know. It might, might not have been that recent. But everything about us, there was the, the lights, the, the music, the roar of the crowd. I'm like, all right, I'm in on this. This is, this is my thing now. And here I am. <laughs> Look at me now. We're a half hour late for the show. <laughs> we'll I, knew, I knew it would bring us here. <laughs> Full, full circle. Any who's uh, we do appreciate all the comments, all all the stories. Like, you know, uh, uh, they're fun, but they're also like it's the it's a bittersweet time to be thinking about, you know, this kind of stuff. Because it's like, damn, I want to be at a game. This would be a what a day off. We're recording this on on a Monday. We're live on a Monday. If you guys are here with us, and 
you know, uh, Dodgers will be coming back home for a, another, you know, short homestand tomorrow. I think it was like two weird two games against Minnesota or something like that. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But and we're not there. That's the worst part. And Gary, remember them good times when we were talking about, like, you know, getting the new home run seats for opening day? Yeah. Spend, see how much money we want to spend, you know, Girl, and how many I, hot dogs we're going like, to kill. Yeah. It feels like decades ago right now. It does feel like that. I, I tell people that this whole thing just feels like one long day with just a little bit of naps here and there. So it's just, uh, it's a very interesting uh, experience. But, you know, like I try to keep looking on the, on the on the bright side of things and, you know, seeing my kids play and seeing them every day and being able to, you know, hang out and just, you know, enjoy some good family time. That's That's been cool. And just breathing really clean air in L.A. has been really nice. Now, see, Mario Lopez, that's what you should have said. Yeah, that's how you not, talk positively about your kids. <laughs> not, oh, I didn't hear what he said. Uh, it was remember. basically like, I want to get away from my kids. <laughs> please, please let me go away from my kids. I hate my kids, but I love my kids. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. he said something about like, oh, the people who don't have kids got to be loving it right now. <laughs> like yeah. that lucky. It was like, hey, dude, they're right there. I see them. <laughs> it was, it was yeah, I saw, I saw a meme about that. Kids. Yeah. It's about like, uh, you have ki- if you have you have no kids, you're trying to find ten things to learn right now so that you can be a better person after this. But then uh, for every parent, you have kids. I mean, you cherish that five minutes you have between ten fifty five and eleven o'clock, and you're like, thank God, it's it's finally quiet, and that that's all you care about, you know. I can I can live on that side, yeah. Reasonable. Yeah. Well, guys, moving uh, moving right along. Obviously, this is. Uh it been an interesting uh, journey, I guess we'll say. But we, we've survived as, as far as we have. Uh, another thing that has survived uh, <laughs> the length of this quarantine is whatever the hell that thing is on Brooke's face. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> it, this is a fashion statement. Are, are you hitting the compliment stage with it? You've been growing that for what? That, that was like you seven know, years now. I think initially it was pity compliments, but we're bordering <laughs> on real life compliments, guys. We're getting there. You're getting there. We we almost did it, Reddit. Like we almost did it. I, you I'm almost a, have I, enough my, karma. To post my fear, Reddit. my fear is I just hit my limit, and it's not going any further than it has, and it's not gonna grow anymore. You should just that's let, my like, fear. You should let the like the the what five to ten hairs grow on the sides as well. Yeah. Hey, get yeah. the uh, full like strap going, but I will say, I didn't lose the competition. Not at you all. You didn't lose the competition. Now, Gary, I don't know how much, if any of these things, you do have loaded up. But I do have this one. Oh, good. I made sure I did this one. So here, I'm gonna Everybody's throw it up right now. Favorite <laughs> utility knife, Enrique Kike Hernandez. Um, he posted a beautiful cop mustache. A couple days after Jared Goff and <laughs> I can see the picture now. Jared Goff and Christian Yelich posted their uh, quarantine um, facial attire. I'll call it. Yeah, Brooke, I I threw you right in there, and I gotta say, I got a lot more comments on it than I thought I would. Uh, yeah, yeah. Obviously, Kike won. Which is DK one. You know, that's mm-hmm. just a dead giveaway. That's my that's my that's, first takeaway. That's from- an incredible. That is a Really good mustache. It's yeah. good. From Enrique it's, I'm Hernandez. impressed by him. He needs to grow it a little further down. To be no, no, less no, no, no. The handlebars. We need full handlebars. Uh, right yes. there. You want to know why? You want to know why? Right there. That is allowable. That is an allowable Yankees mustache. That's, so yeah, it's legal. He's he's showing um, whoever's he's running material. the Yankees. Yeah, he's Yankees material. Hey, this is his free agent. This is his walk year, too. So you don't my, know if he's in the back. My second takeaway is a lot of people hate Christian Yelich. My yes. third takeaway is a lot of people like me, and they're just being nice. <laughs> My fourth takeaway, a lot of people do not know what Jared Goff looks like without a helmet and jersey on. <laughs> no one knew who that was. They were like, am I supposed to know this guy? Yeah. They, thought, they thought he was our intern. You know, they like... Were like <laughs> I actually saw a comment was like, what's up with chubby Ryan Gosling? And I was like, his name's Clint. And they were like, no, the guy in the picture. And I was like, oh, yeah, he does kind of look like chubby Ryan Gosling. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I'll take it down. So, I, th- I just think Yelich looks like Richie Valens. But I mean, that was that was way old. I, I don't think that many right. people know it. So 
So Yelly's choice in shirt for that photograph is suspect at at yeah, at, best. at least <laughs> at least. Uh, I I definitely would not go with the uh, at least back in my day they used to call it the wife beater. I don't know if that's allowed anymore, but that was a bad uh, choice of a shirt to wear when you have. I think Hamill earlier called it uh, the molestache. Hmm. It's a bad <laughs> mustache. It's a yeah. bad he's, look. For he's wearing what they call a uh, trailer park tuxedo. That's but look at what Katie Katie wrote the, in the comments. You guys, it's like Yelich yeah, looks like he should be ha- handing out candy to children from the side of a van at the park. That's just oh. a perfect description. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't let him hear that. He's gonna be so sad. His kneecap <laughs> already blew up or whatever. So um, my, I think okay. So personally, my favorite takeaway from from this uh, this particular tweet I posted was that I am blocked by Kike. Online, as a lot of people here might know, if you've been listening for the last, you know, almost three years, I've been blocked by Kike for a while. But people were tagging him in it, so I could just, I don't, I don't know what the the logistics are of, of you know, his side of it, of him getting tagged and things, <laughs> and it says like, you know, unable to display whatever it is. So I love that. That's plus stuff. I'm gonna go and give me a few points and some money, apparently. For being blocked by Kike four or five years ago, but but you've grown what? a lot since. So I think he should give you another chance. I hope, maybe. Well, he was terrible that year. So whatever it was, I said he <laughs> might have deserved it. But he's he's grown, grown a lot too. So let's hope he he's unblocks too. too. Yes. Nice kid, friend of the show. <laughs> uh, tell us your favorite Kike nice. story, Gary. <laughs> no, let's see. Can't do that. All <laughs> it's right. After We're, dark. What? What? Uh, comment were you by far the most offended at oh oh oh, oh. what got, did he call me a cross of he called me a cross of bregman and and goff is that what he called oh me? yeah somebody That's said the, wow brooke likes a cross of jared well, goff wasn't there a little reddick in there no reddick right no it wasn't no, reddick. It, was, oh, okay. it was it was bregman and goff which first of all number one how dare you compare me to either of those men because I don't like either of them at all. One of what? them is a horrible human being, and he's really short, and he sucks, and he lies. And the other one is an overpaid quarterback. So, <laughs> tell us how you really feel. That's it. That's how I really feel. So he's ruining LA's only franchise, uh, <laughs> and only only football franchise. He renegotiated his uh, contract. Hmm. He did. He did restructure because it's like, look, I know I suck, so we need to change something. We need Here's to some money for a line. People are going to blame me. Yeah. I don't want them to blame me, so take some money back. <laughs> you got my guy Louie in the stream. He says, hands up for Lo Castro. So you, now you got uh, somebody calling you Lo Castro, so at least you can Shout come away with a win on that, right? I'll take it, boy. I'll take it. I want to be Timmy Two Fly any day. <laughs> Um, let's see. All right, let's find a. I don't think p- many people have commented too much on it. No, I think they're just like, "What the hell is this? I don't want to talk about this." <laughs> intimidated by your mustache. Yeah, you know, I know you guys can barely tell the difference between me and Charlie Blackman right now, but I assure you, it's me. No need to worry. So you're just gonna let it keep going, dude? I mean, what are we looking at here? Probably through May. We're going to be quarantined maybe halfway through May. I mean, I still don't. No one really knows what's happening. Everyone's kind of like, you can go to the beach, but you can't. And it's like, okay, great. Uh, So I'm going to let it go until uh, until we safely can have podcasts together in a studio and sit side by side. I will let it grow. I mean, I think we technically can safely do it now. It's just people will talk crap about us if we do it. Yeah, we don't want to. We don't want to upset anybody, so it's just easier to do it from the comfort of our own homes and not risk it. But we and also let me run stress out in the first fifteen people. minutes and and sweat and say, "Why isn't this working?" That's how I start fair, off every I did, podcast. I did want to stay on that prep call uh, longer earlier in the day, but you guys didn't. So, oh, dude, that felt good. That bus rolling over me. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, get that back, massage. Back, I know, right there. Do it again, please. Thank you. Uh, uh, Hamilton's in the stream. He says he wants to bet a dollar that uh, not everyone with a mustache is a child molester. But all molesters do have mustaches. Is this accurate? I don't think so. Coincidence? Probably shouldn't have read that comment. 
but that's okay. That's right. It's, we can it's that. in the comments, so it's out there anyways. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be seen. Char- Christianetta says I look like Uncle Rico, and uh, I just want you to know I can throw a football over them. Can mountains. Confirm. Gary can confirm. Can confirm. Mm-hmm. Well, Leslie wants to know how long the hair is. Do we have a video on him chucking the ball? We're just we're getting out of hand, guys. Yeah, this is the the Brook um, body hair edition. I told the uh, looking told, for uh, shampoo oh, shampoo sponsors. Twitter. When I saw Eric Caros pop up on the Zoom call, I was like, oh, my God, when my hair gets long, I look just like Eric Caros. <laughs> well, dump it out. Like, let's see discount, the, discount Eric Caros. Let's, let's see the poof discount Eric Caros. He's just I, shooting. I, I can't really poof it. It's oh, like oh, that. sorry. Yeah. Okay, I see. I see. Yeah. Uh, the sorry, flow, I'm the flow is the, excessive right now, guys. I'm looking, I was looking at a delayed vi- or version of this because, again, it's hard to do this remote. But, hey, you know what? Uh, none of our videos were delayed. We didn't make Vince Scully sound like he had a stroke, so I'd say win-win. Kudos to us. All right, somebody pull it out of your ass. Give me a final thought. Give me something positive. Uh, uh, I can give you something positive right now. Our Cyber Dodgers are on a seven-game winning streak. Seven-game winning streak. Seven-game winning streak. Like we've been, I've been doing these freaking game simulations ever since spring training, and I mean, people love it. I, I love seeing the comments and people getting into it. Uh, the Do- just to let everybody can know, the Dodgers are 18 and 10 after a seven game winning streak. They just swept the Nationals and the Pirates and they're coming back home, I think, or today's break. Um, they're one game back behind the Cyber Padres, who are 19 and 9, but they lost their last two. Kershaw is leading the league in wins with five, and he also is leading with a 0.59 ERA, which is like 0.6 better than DeGrom right now. And then David Price and Walker Buehler are third and fourth in ERA with 1.23 and 1.27 ERAs, respectively. Kenley is third in the league with nine saves. Justin Turner is second in the league with 10 doubles. Jock Peterson is fifth in the league with two triples. Mookie Betts is ninth in the National League with seven home runs. And Cody Bellinger is ninth in the league, in National League, for uh, with 19 RBIs. So they're doing well. And this all happened after I put Corey Seager back in the lineup when he was injured. So I don't know. I mean, you guys can do whatever you want, but it's actually pretty exciting Corey. now that we're winning. Hmm? I said happy birthday, Corey, by the way. Oh, yeah. Happy yeah. Bir- happy birthday, Mr. Steal Your Girl. <laughs> Seeger Smooth is, what, 28 today, I think it is? I don't know. He's older. He's, He's wiser. Older. He's got a dog. Uh, what the hell was I going to say? <laughs> so these these are my gripes, and I see John John's in the stream saying, can we get the actual uniform number for Lux? Because I know that Cyber Dodger Lux is still wearing 48 when he switched to 9, so you have to update. I don't know. Does it let you still update along the way? I yeah, think it does. Already, I just have to wait even, for the updates. Already, oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there you go. What? I think mookie is hitting like what 160 or something like that but has six or seven homers yeah he had a streak where he hit like three home runs in three games so i think that really bumped him up but i think he's warming up i guess i don't know the developers are from san diego so i don't know what the hell's going on 20 wait Um, it's only 26 that's on that's impossible hey Uh, trust him math math is hard uh, Charlie Hamill do, over on but... Facebook says, "Is the Dodger Nation shop shipping shirts still during quarantine?" That's what and they the told me. That yeah, is yes. Yeah, because what what do we do it through, Gary? The uh, Teespring. So they Teespring. they have multiple warehouses around the country. I think everybody wears gloves, so it should be good. If not, just you know, put some UV light on it. You're good to go. There and I go. and I think <laughs> I think Teespring is coming out with like uh, a mask soon as well. If they haven't already, so you might be able to get a, oh. a Dodge Station mask. If not, oh yeah, other stuff. I think I saw. Yeah, I think I saw that coming out. But you know, everybody, or man, you don't need to buy. Ravine Rockers. Yeah, yeah, Ravine Rockers. I mean, he came out with our Major League Cheaters shirt, which is freaking amazing. So everybody should go check out the shirt there. Um, but yeah, I think uh, the mask. Everybody's been selling them on every Facebook group in the world. So it's like I think average price is ten bucks. But you can find a really nice. You know, nice person here and there who, who's going to give it away for free. But, uh, All right. you know, just be careful, everyone. <laughs> Subtle, I like it. Uh, to, to before, before we bounce, Kevin wants me to have an uh, a three. Wait. Oh, the three of us having an episode of, of just playing Freebird, which I'm down for. You know, I got I got I got the slap of the bass right there. And I think I got where are you at? Where are you at? I got the other guitar there. So Kevin needs say? to know that. Uh, you and Selena have heard me sing, and it's 
it's I'm literally the worst singer in the world, and I think they can agree on this. And they don't need this for the show because I already started. Yeah, we that. we are not a uh, what do you call that? A musical bunch here over at Toucher's Nation. You do. You don't. Yeah, you can carry it. You can do it, Glenn. Yeah. We'll just watch. I'll get uh, I'll get Hillary back. I saw Hillary in the stream earlier. She had a great Vince uh, Vince Scully story where Hillary. she froze. So that's always cool. Aww. Love you, Hills. But uh, man, do we need baseball back? We need you bad. Please let it happen. So many players are down for it. I think it's just waiting on Kershaw to agree to anything. So until then, you can find us struggling on DodgersNation.com. <laughs> Please come hang out with us. You know, we're we're doing what we can to bring you uh, some fun content that's at least going to get you through the day. So, um, you know, if you have ideas, let us know. Slip into them DMs if you want us to write about something. Uh, you know what? YOLO, man. That's what we're here for. Uh, subscribe to Blue Heaven on iTunes, Spotify, iHeart, Radio, Stitcher, Radio, Google Play, Player FM. Uh, should I just name them all off? Let's keep going. I don't know. There's so you're many already, more. You're already there doing it. So, so say so many, many more. more. So many more, guys. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash Dodgers Nation TV. Make sure to hit that little notification bell so you can see when we go live and then go off because we malfunctioned and then go live again. And then you'll know that we are back on and live again. So that's the important thing, guys. Uh, I am at Brookme3 on Twitter and Instagram. This guy probably on this side of me is at RealFRG on Twitter and Instagram. We are at Dodgers Nation on Twitter. At officials Dodge Nation on Instagram. Huge thank you to our production team who figured it out on the other side and let us have a live show without him. It would not be possible. Thank you so much, Gary, for figuring it out for us. Thank you guys for your comments and questions and tuning in. And we'll see you next month or at some time. Sometime. Bye. Bye.